It's a beautiful cloudy day today. I've been out in the garden looking for specific plants, something like this. They've got their own pups and I'm thinking of separating them now. If you stick around, we'll talk about this a bit more. yet another entry in my propagation series of videos and as you've guessed from my opening earlier we are going to talk about pups specifically when and how do I remove the pups from the parent plant I've still got lots of upcoming content for this propagation series so if you don't want to miss out make sure to subscribe or follow depending on the platform that you're watching on in the context of this video I'm referring to pups as the small plants that grow as offsets from the main stem and as you can see, clearly all of them are attached to the main stem somehow. There's a few reasons why you would want to separate the pups from the main plant. But before we get to that, let me explain to you when not to separate them yet. Let us take this embossed gem for example. As you can see, it has several pups along the stem. And this is a prime example of when not to separate them yet. Because right now they're still too young and they won't be able to survive on their own. They would just end up drying really fast. So right now they won't be able to support themselves without roots and they will be forced to grow roots before doing anything else. So it's best to leave them alone at this stage. And now moving along, here's a few reasons why I would consider separating them from the main stem. We're going back to this embossed gem for this first case. And again, as you can see, we've got lots of pups along the stem, very tiny pups. And then there's this large offset right here. As you can see, it's got its own stem. It's still connected to the main plant though. But I believe this is mature enough to be able to sustain itself. And the other thing is, if you look closely at this pup, it seems like it's not getting enough sunlight. It's starting to stretch, it's getting leggy. The newer growth is so pale, the leaves are starting to droop. Clearly, it's not getting enough sun. However, I can't just move this entire pot into a sunnier location because these smaller pups here won't be able to take it yet. So separating this large pup from the main stem makes sense to me for two reasons. The first one, as I just mentioned, is the different light requirements. And the second reason is, if I remove this large pup here, then the main stem would focus all of its nutrients on the smaller plants. This means that the smaller pups here would be getting a boost since this larger one here won't be taking from the resource pool anymore. The next case would be something like this. As you can see, the Echeveria Fire Nice here is a pup on the long stem. And as the pup grows, it's starting to shift a lot of weight towards this side, making the parent plant lean towards this direction. If I let this go on for long enough, then the parent stem would be bent too far and it will start shrinking. I think the correct term for that is atrophy or atrophy. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But in any case, the main stem will suffer because once that happens, the flow of nutrients along the stem would be affected. There would be a reduced flow and it might even lead to rot. So both of these plants would suffer if I let this go on. Too much bending will lead to trauma on the main stem. And it is for that reason why it's a good idea to remove this pup. Another case of why you would want to separate the pups is if you have them in a pup and it's getting quite crowded then of course there's going to be a reduced airflow and the underside would be staying moist for longer than it should which as you know is perfect conditions for fungus to grow. And there are two ways to go about this. First of course you could repot this, place this in a bigger pot if you want to keep the aesthetic. But otherwise, another thing you could do is to remove the larger pups. Make sure you remove the large ones because the smaller pups would still stand to benefit from being connected to the main stem. They would be growing faster that way. And basically, you're just decongesting the plant. And finally, another reason why you want to separate them now is if you intend to sell them and you would want them to keep a nice shape, then separating them would be a good idea. Because if you leave them here under the parent plant and let them grow, they would be pushing against a parent plant and either the parent plant or the pups would be deformed and you wouldn't want that for your show pieces. So as soon as you see them to be mature enough to be able to sustain themselves then you could go ahead and pluck them. From this pot I think this, this and this, this three, only these three are mature enough to be separated. I'm going to keep this one for now. There's a few more pups underneath that are still quite tiny and I'll let them stay on the parent stem for as long as they can. This is an example of a pup with a long stem. This is an Echeveria Dix Pink. And I chopped it off from the parent plant 
very recently i think it was just a few days ago this was the length of the stem when i got it as you can see it's quite long you can use it as is if you want the stem is still fairly green which means that it's going to be vigorous if you want to give it the best chances to grow roots and be healthy then you make sure to chop off closer to the plant because this part of the stem would be more vigorous and in this case since i chopped this off i would need to give it some time to dry out and callus over so i think i'll be giving it a few more days i usually allow them three to four days in my climate to dry out it might be different in other climates but as soon as enough time has passed then i would be planting this in its own pot and i wouldn't start watering it until maybe two weeks from now this is a pretty young plant so i'm pretty sure that it would be pushing out roots really soon you might have seen this in the previous video basically i gathered lots of pops from my echeveras out there and stuck them in this pot to make a little mandala of some sort what i'm basically doing here is let them grow their own roots and once i have established i could either sell them or reuse them in some of my other landscapes the sun is out now and i think i will go out and harvest more pops that I harvested so far. I think I need to point out that I'm doing this in my springtime. So for those of you in the northern hemisphere as you're heading into winter really soon, I think you shouldn't do it now. The reason I bring this up is because Echeverias actively grow during the warmer months. It's getting pretty warm down here in Australia. And by doing all of this separation, chops and whatnot, it doesn't really matter because they are actively growing, which means that they're going to be pushing out roots really soon. Otherwise, if you're going to do this during the colder months, they might be entering dormancy, if not already dormant. And in that case, they won't be spending any of their energy towards growing roots. And if you're not careful, if you keep watering them, then they might end up rotting and dying. So, word of caution. And that's it for this episode about pups. And hopefully in a few months, they become well-established and I can sell some of them. Except for the elegance, because I'm definitely going to reuse this in my landscape. And I'm a hoarder of Echeveria elegance. So, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye! Special thanks to my Patreon supporters such as Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Lorena Noti, Camila Baez, Linda Leal, Gwen Ott, Jesse May, Q2, and everyone else who pledged on Patreon. Thank you so much. And finally, you can check out my Instagram that's at SeriscaPage and I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag DailyEchevera.